Infiniti is far from the first luxury automotive brand to show off an electric car concept in the wake of fending off Tesla and other startups, but Nissan's upscale division has taken the 2018 Leaf's heart and run in a very different direction. This is the Infiniti Prototype 9, a design concept due to be shown this week at the 2017 Pebble Beach Concourse deal against near Monterey, California. But under the vintage-looking clothes of the Prototype 9, lies a powertrain from the 2018 Nissan LEAF. A 148-horsepower electric motor, with 236 pound-feet of torque, and a 30 kWh battery, powers the rear wheels through a single-speed transmission, according to Infiniti. Interestingly enough, that sounds a lot like the electric motor that's set to power the front wheels of the new LEAF based on vehicle specifications that were leaked last week. Therefore in this Infiniti design project, it's built as a next-generation EV powertrain. Still, its performance may bode well for the upcoming Nissan LEAF. Infiniti says the prototype 9 has a top speed of 106 mph, with a 0 to 62 time of 5.5 seconds. Spend all your charge on a racetrack and Infiniti says the prototype 9 should last up to 20 minutes, without actually giving a number of miles it might last. The Infiniti prototype 9 is packing Nissan's newest EV technology under a striking body, mixing old and new. But why does it look like a 1940s road checker? After all, Infiniti doesn't have a mid-20th century racing history because it was a brand created in 1989. Alfonso Albaisa, Infiniti's Senior Vice President of Global Design, says the prototype 9's look was inspired by the fantasy of chancing upon an unrecognized race car, hidden away for decades in a barn, deep in the Japanese countryside. Therefore, it bears a heavy resemblance to the German and Italian race cars from the 1930s and 40s. Even if Infiniti's designers in Japan try to infuse cues from the brand's production cars in the front and sides. While the Infiniti prototype 9 is a beautiful recreation of what the 1940s racing scene may have looked like if they'd been around to build a car, don't expect to be able to ever buy one. Yet, the technology underneath is destined for a Nissan dealership very soon. Why I bought it? We fell into Subaru ownership after a disastrous episode with a C-Class Mercedes which was suffering from spontaneous, and as it turned out terminal, limp home mode disease. Eventually the garage took it back and as their Subaru specialist, sold us the legacy. I'm not entirely sure what would have happened had they been a Dacia dealer. What I wish I'd known. I wish I'd known how good they were years ago. It would have saved lots of bother. I also wish I'd known that you can't take the CD player out in isolation because it's now eaten six of my favorites. Hopefully the next owner will like New Order and ELO. When it eventually starts working again. I also wish I'd known that there's an even more powerful spec B manual version as I might have held on for one of those things I love. 
It's a proper left field car which I love. It has four pedalless doors, always a good start in my book, and is a massively capable high-speed tip visiting tool. After 97,000 miles it still feels really well screwed together, has super comfy heated seats, a lovely leathery interior and does a great job in family hauling mode. In six months it has cost not a penny in faults or maintenance and with its four-wheel drive handles as though it's on the proverbial rails. Also, in a coolish, stealthy, handsome and understated sort of way I think it looks ace, and you certainly won't see another on your way to Waitrose. It also has a 245 horsepower 3.0 liter flat 6 engine which sounds glorious. Never mind that it's an automatic, take it to the red line and it sings. It's worth the only three and a half sheds money for the sound alone. I used to love the sound of my TVRs and this is up there. As well as that it serves as a constant reminder never to buy another diesel. Things I hate. Not hate exactly, but boy does it like a drink. I've never seen a fuel figure that begins with a 3. In fact, quite often, they start with a 1. We knew this prior to purchase and when it all gets a bit much we leave it at home and take the MX-5, or even better, the Renault Kangoo van. If I had to use it every day we wouldn't have bought it in the first place. Costs. Nothing apart from petrol. It's cheaper to insure than the Merc that limp before and not too bad to tax. One year younger and it would have been over 500 pounds or whatever the top band is and that would have been a showstopper. It's due a service in Mo in November. The rear end feels a bit floaty so it may need some new dampers and the front brakes are on the way so there may well be a bit of expenditure coming up. Where I've been. Just around and about South Wales and Herefordshire. Its favourite road is the A465 from Abergavenny to Hereford, which is also great on a bike if you've never tried it. It'll soon be off to MotoGP at Silverstone so you may see it there. What next? Well considering that I once kept a Civic Type R for only three weeks it would be foolish of me to state here in writing that it's a keeper. But honestly, at this time, and because it's such a capable all-rounder, I can't see a reason to get rid. It isn't particularly a car that you look back at when you've parked up, but it's definitely got a grin-inducing sound and for an old and is pretty sprightly, and that will do nicely for now. New spy photos suggest that Subaru's next generation Forester will keep the same general shape, including a sloping windshield, large windows and a tall roof line but the compact crossover apparently will get a more aggressive front and add sportier side profile. The photos also indicate that the headlights and grille will be similar to those of the Impreza and Crosstrek. The Forester was last redesigned for the 2014 model year. The new version is likely to debut at an auto show in early 2018 and go on sale later that year as a 2019 model. The newly launched Nissan Super Safari and Nissan Patrol continue to impress auto aficionados through its proud history and reputation for versatility, capability, and extreme performance. The 2017 Patrol Super Safari boasts all a new tan leather seats and door trim with 8-way power seats for the driver and 4-way for the front passenger. New driver aids included a navigation system as well as front and rear parking sensors with rear view camera, Bluetooth, USB, CD, auxiliary input socket and FM AM radio to complete the in-car entertainment offering. The vehicle comes equipped with automatic climate control and a built-in, refrigerated cool box. Building on the iconic Super Safari model, the new Nissan Patrol Super Safari enjoys the legendary exterior design which has distinguished it from other patrol models and made it one of the most recognized icons of modern off-road vehicles. 
The Patrol Super Safari boasts a 4.8 LDOHC inline six-cylinder engine producing 280 horsepower and a mighty 46 kilograms or 451 newton meters of torque which allows it to power up dunes or tow heavy objects with ease. The engine is mated to a 5-speed automatic transmission with manual mode. Vehicle Dynamic Control VDC, and a tire pressure monitoring system TPMS, keep everything on the straight and narrow while driving on the highway. Dual front airbags, ABS, on a mobilizer and cruise control are among the other features contributing to both safety and driver convenience, while the vehicle boasts rear locking differentials, an electric front winch as well as front and rear tow hooks as standard equipment for desert use. The Nissan Patrol is now available with new exterior colors, gray metallic and pure white pearl, as well as a new tan interior color. There are great options on board the new Nissan Patrol with all grades featuring an array of standard features including 8-way power driver's seat, cruise control, 7-inch LCD screen, dual zone climate control, 18-inch alloy wheels with full-size spare, side steps, front and rear parking sensors with rear-view camera and keyless entry and start. The Nissan Patrol features the world's first variable 4x4 mode select switch, which allows drivers to effortlessly switch between sand, on road and rock drive modes. The Patrol is remarkably capable in sand mode, enabling safe driving options quickly and skillfully, as compared to professional rally drivers. The Patrol also employs the world's first advanced hydraulic body motion control system, HBMC, with four-wheel independent suspension. Along with a new chassis and body frame, it gives the vehicle superb stability on rugged arid sandy terrain, while delivering a comfortable ride in the city. The vehicle dynamic control automatically prevents the patrol from sliding sideways on slippery road surfaces when changing lanes or negotiating a curve. The traction control system senses when a front wheel slips and responds by instantly reducing throttle to help restore grip. Lastly the locking rear differential allows drivers to pull out of mud or loose sand easily by distributing torque evenly to the rear wheels. The Patrol includes Nissan's world-renowned Safety Shield concept that vehicles help protect people. The Patrol is available with an advanced six airbag configuration. While having created a comprehensive array of advanced safety systems, the engineering team has also managed to create world-first technologies, besides the Hydraulic Body Motion Control System HBMC. They include the curtain vent, an advanced individual DVD entertainment system and the tire pressure monitor system with tire inflation indicator.